Hey, welcome back to Mrs O'Gram's Maths. So we've got a miserable rainy day here in New Zealand today and my family seem to be hogging the Xbox so I can't go play Fortnite. I may as well put together this practice task example for you. So this is based on a situation around a park and I'm going to show you the working through the steps of how to complete each of the questions. So we've got this map about um, some walkways through a park and you've got these points of interest marked with the letters A through to G. So we're first of all going to convert this into a network diagram. So each of those points we've got as a node and we'll label them with their letters. Now anywhere that there's a path between um, two nodes we will draw an edge on our network diagram. So it's going to get built up like this. We've got a path between A and B, A and D, a and C and so on. Everywhere that there's a path, we will add in one of those edges. Okay. Most of the time we'll try and keep them straight even though they're wiggly on the picture. Um, the only exception there you can see is that BF line just to make it clear and it not cross over D when it doesn't actually go to D. Then we have our first question. Is it possible to walk all of the paths without repeating any? Say you want to set up a walking through walking route through the park could you do that where you go along every single path without having to double back on yourself at any time so this situation is asking us to have a think about traversability now we've looked at that on uh, previous videos to do that we have to label our nodes with their order or degree so we've got to count how many endpoints there are at each node so b there for example is of degree four and we'll go through and label each of those nodes with their degree. Now we can see that this is not going to be possible because we've got too many odd nodes. We know that the rule for traversability is that this will work if we have no odd nodes or exactly two odd nodes. Here we've got four of them so it's way too many. This next question asks us to um, take a look at this situation where we're told about the time it takes to get between each of those nodes on each of the paths. Now, Nairi is the park ranger and she's at A. She gets called to say she's got to get to G as quickly as possible and we want to find the fastest route and how long that will take her. So the table that we've got tells us how long it takes in minutes to walk each of those paths and we want to find the fastest route um, to get Nairi to, from A to G. So we put each of those labels onto the edges for how much time they take from that table. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to look at the shortest path from A to G. Now, the, there's an easy way to do this in a slightly harder way that you can use Dijkstra's algorithm is slightly more complicated to do, but it takes a little less time. And if you want to look up how to do that, it's one on the previous video on shortest paths. I'm going to go with the way that takes a little bit longer, but it's um, more foolproof uh, so you're less likely to miss out any possibilities and that's by drawing a tree of possible routes that we could take so Nairi starts at a so let's just do us a little a to begin with now from a she's got three options she could go to b and that would take 12 minutes to d which would be eight or to c which would be nine and then we go to each of those nodes and we decide where we want to go to next. So from B, we could do um, up to E. Now, if we go from B to E, that's going to go, give us another nine on from B. So that takes us up to 21 minutes. Um, from B, we could choose to go to F instead, which would be now up to 24 minutes because we're adding another 12. If we did A to D, we could go from D to B. That would give us a total of 13. Now, I'm just going to stop and notice that that's more than the, the, the value that we got at B if we went straight there from A. So I'm not going to continue that one because it's more than if we just did AB. OK, so that says more than AB. Um, the other option from D is that we went to C. And that would have cost us 15 if we went ADC. And again, I'm going to notice here that down here, I've already got to uh, an option that gets me to C in nine. So I'm not going to carry that one, carry on that one, because it's more than if I just did AC. Now, note, I'm making 
a note of each time I make a decision, I'm writing down that decision. You should do the same when you're working through um, your solutions. If you decide to stop a branch for any reason, just write down why you're stopping and write it in a way that you can read it a bit better than what I've put there. OK, so if I did A to C, I'm looking at this bottom branch now from C, I could then go to D. That would cost me a total of the nine plus the seven. So that's a 16. Again, I have um, different options that would have got me to, to D faster over here. So I'm not going to carry on that one. It's too much. That was more than if I did A straight to D. OK, uh, the other option, if I go AC, would be to then go to F. That would give me a total of 19. OK, now I'm going to keep that one on there. OK, next layer. In fact, I'm going to change my color pen just to make it a bit easier to follow as I go through now. So if I go back up to the top of the branch, I haven't quite got to G yet. So A, B, E, then my options from E, I've only got one, and that's to go to G. And that would add me another seven, so that's 28. A, B, F, from F again, we can just go to G, and that would add another five, so that takes me to 29. Now we've, the next three branches, we already decided we weren't going to carry on with them. So down to the bottom one, A, C, F, last step that can happen there is a G, and that's to add on five of 24. So then our very last step is to look at which one was the smallest, which of course is right here this 24 minute uh, branch. So this is the one I'm looking at for our solution. So now we should go A to C to F to G and it will take 24 minutes to walk that route. So we've seen a question on traversability and one on shortest path. We're going to look at this next question now about upgrades. The council wants to upgrade the paths to be wheelchair accessible, but can't afford to upgrade all of the paths in the park. The table on the next slide is going to show us the cost of upgrading each of the paths in thousands of dollars. So there's our table. We want to find the least possible cost of upgrading the path so that it's possible to get to all the places that you want to. So all of those points of interest, the nodes, along wheelchair accessible paths. So we take that table and we put the values onto our network diagram of thousands of dollars to upgrade each of those paths. Now we want to find a way to connect all of our nodes in the least possible cost. So we set up our nodes like this and we're going to choose each of those edges um, using Kruskal's algorithm where we pick the smallest one and we add it to our network diagram so long as it helps us in our overall solution. So we want to add, find the minimum spanning tree here. We're going to add in the four first of all. That improves our connectivity and it doesn't create any circuits. Now we go for the next smallest is a six. Again, I'm looking for the fact that it improves connectivity, doesn't create circuits, and it's the smallest number that we can pick. The next one we could pick is a seven. That's all good. Next is a nine. Now there are two nines to choose from. We're not going to take this one here. We're not doing that one because that one would create a circuit for us between A, D and C. We don't want any circuits. It's got to be a tree. So the nine that we'll pick is over there at B, E. And then we're going for a 10. Again, we're not going to choose this 10 between A and B because that would create a circuit for us. But we could choose either of the other two 10s, the either B, F or E, G. Either of those would work and give us a minimum spanning tree. And if we add up our total cost to be able to connect all those places now, we're talking about that coming to a cost of $42,000. Now we've got this situation here where some of the paths have become waterlogged in recent storms and it's not possible to do upgrades on them. So over here we've got our ideal minimum spanning tree. We're going to think about this situation of what if we couldn't use some of the paths that were originally set out on our um, original network diagram. So which path or paths would cause the minimal increase in costs if it can't be upgraded? So here's what we want to happen over here on the right. We want that minimum spanning tree. Now think which of these paths wouldn't be a problem 
over here on the original diagram if we couldn't use them if because of the storm situation. Of course, it would be any of the ones that weren't used in our minimum spanning tree. So AB, that wouldn't cause us any extra increase. Um, AD and CF and BF. If any of those became unusable for the upgrades, it wouldn't cause a problem. It would be a, a zero change to our cost. If we had to take out any of the the edges that we do have in our tree, it's probably going to cause us some some cost issues there. The only one really that wouldn't is over here, e.g. we could swap that one out for BF. That also would give us a zero cost, but any others would cause changes to our costs. So then the next question is which path or paths would cause the biggest increase in costs if we couldn't use them for the upgrade? So for this one, you want to work through this um, systematically. So consider each of the edges in he this minimum spanning tree that we've got. What would happen if we couldn't use them? So if we couldn't use this AC7, what would we have to do instead? Well, the smallest way to get A connected up if we're not using AC would be to connect it across here to D. That would give us an increase of two because we'd be taking out the seven and replacing it with a nine. Now we consider that with each of the other edges as well and see which one's going to cost us the most. So if we couldn't use CD, then we would have to connect up. Again, it would be using that AD would be the, the cheapest way to do that to get, get those AC edges uh, nodes connected back in. So that would be a cost of nine. That would add three onto our total cost. If we couldn't use BD, we would use, let's have a little look. It would have to be, the, the smallest one would be the 10 between A, B. So that would give us an increase of four. If we couldn't use B, E, then the smallest way to keep the whole thing connected would be to join B to F. So that would be a cost of 10 instead of nine. So that's a one extra. If we couldn't use E, G, then we can take that one out, we can replace that with BF, and actually that would cause no increase, just like I explained on the last one. Now, FG, if we take that four out, the shortest way to get F connected back in again is to connect it back up to B. That would cost us 10. So that would be an additional six. Now, we're looking for which caused the biggest increase. So that's definitely this one over here. If we couldn't use that four, it would cost us an additional six to replace um, to make that connected again. So the path that would cause the biggest increase would be FG. It would cause an additional $6,000 to be able to create this connected network again.